If someone has not given me gift this Christmas, I'm okay. I have a gift that passes all kind of gifts I would ever receive from any human. The birth of Jesus Christ is not a ritual that we get to do every year. But it is something that is unique and impactful. And I would want you to zero in to the impact of the birth of Christ more than just thinking about the aspect of eating and drinking and all of that. It is okay to eat. It's the end of the year and all of that to thank God and be thankful for God keeping you through the year. But more than that, the scripture says that the kingdom of God is not about meat and drink. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, zeroing in on what I want to talk about, the birth of Christ, it is more about the impact of the birth of Christ. Why was Jesus born to you? Or what do you really understand about the birth of Jesus to you personally? The truth is that it is not a ritual that is born this year, no. It is a celebration for us to remember him that he is alive right now and he will continually live forever but what impact has his birth as a man had on you as a christian had on you as a human being what impact do you tap from the gift that he is to us because he is a gift that keeps on giving jesus is a gift that keeps on giving and that is the one thing we don't talk about enough the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now I will read this scripture because I really, I was inspired by this scripture to pick up some things right here. But first of all, it says, Unto us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, he is being given as a son. Scriptures in John 3 16, For God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten son that is a gift he is a gift so he's not just a child that is born he's a son that god gave to the world for a reason for a purpose and if we don't receive this gift knowing the purpose now the first thought that came to my mind is how do you react to a gift being given to you is it with gratitude or maybe you feel like I'm, I don't deserve it. Oh, don't worry. You know, sometimes somebody brings a gift to us and be like, oh, take this. And you're like, no, don't worry. I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. And somehow that is the way we behave to this gift. We come out every Christmas and celebrate, oh, the birth of Jesus. But then in our life, we are behaving as, no, God, don't worry. I can handle this. I can handle my life. Don't worry. I'm fine. Don't worry. I'm okay. Don't worry. I can take care of myself. Don't worry. I have the strength. No, just give me, give me a moment. I'm going to try something. And it tells about our human arrogance and pride because this gift was given because we had a place of deficiency. So it was given to actually solve that place of deficiency in us to bridge the gap, the gasm that was created between us and God. And that was the cry that Job had, that Job said, be it that I have a man that intercedes for me, between me and God, but today we have him. He was given as a gift, and it's a gift that keeps on giving. Now what would you do with this gift that is given to you, if not that you receive this gift? This gift, you don't have to work for this gift. If you work for it, it's a reward. You don't have to view him as one religious thing for you to do a religious act for you to get to have him. He is a gift given to you and me. And what do you do with a gift? Openly receive it. Consent to receive. Now, scripture says that the government, the empire, shall be upon his shoulder. It makes him an emperor. It means he's the emperor of our life. It means he is in charge of our life. Wow. So, and the shoulder is seen as a place of burden, which means this emperor, his duty is to carry our burden on his shoulder, to carry us on his shoulder. We are also part of his burden, which is his responsibility. And it means I have an emperor. The government is on his shoulder. He's a son given for me. The government of my life, like the empire of my life, the empire of us as human beings is upon his shoulder and his shoulder is big enough to carry all our burdens. That's why scripture says, cast your care to the Lord for he cares for you. 
now you need to get the fact that God really cares and God is capable and able and more than able yeah, to, to take care of your problem. So he says he is an emperor governing the empire. God owns the whole empire of the universe. God owns the whole universe. So it means the whole empire of the whole universe, the government was handed over to Christ. And he is the emperor in charge. Ah, he showed us a big enough to carry my burden. Now I want you to get to a place of faith, of just seeing him beyond just celebrating Christ was born, all oh, the angels we have heard on high, and all of that, the shepherds see him as this emperor that came for your sake, that has a big old shoulders to carry you on his shoulders. And what do you do for someone to carry you on their shoulders, to carry your burden on their shoulders, is to consent. Have you consented to this Savior? Have you consented to the Lord Jesus for him to carry you? Because if you've not consented, you've not received this son that is given to you. It's a free gift. You did not work to get it. You did not solicit for it. None of us solicited and prayed for God to give us Christ. God gave us Christ because he saw that we were bankrupt and we needed him. But we did not know that we needed him. And that is where we are most times in our life. We don't know we need Christ. Most of us don't know. That's why we feel like we can do life by ourselves. But when you get to realize that he is the emperor of your life, it makes sense now. The government of my life is upon his shoulders, which is my burden he can carry, my pain he can carry. Now I could understand Isaiah 53, that he, on, it, on him, on his body, he carried all my sickness, all my infirmities, all my burdens, because the, the government is on his shoulders. Wow, this is so good to me. I did not get this, this revelation earlier, but as I'm speaking, it's so beautiful to get it. Eve is my emperor, and the government, the empire is on his shoulder, is carrying the empire. I am an empire too. He's carrying me. You are an empire. He's carrying you. He can care for me. He has already carried my burden. He has already carried my pain. He has already carried my sickness. He has already nailed them to the cross. I have an emperor. Now, let me continue before I hang though. And his name shall be called. Now, let's wait on that name. His name means authority. Name means character. Name means what you are known for. So if you are being called Samuel, that's why in the Old Testament, in the Bible, when they will call someone a name, they will, the name will have a meaning. Like Samuel, because I asked him of the Lord. Moses, because he was drawn out of water. The name represents how he came forth. And all of that. So your name matters. And now let's talk about Christ's name. The scripture says that his name shall be wonderful. I checked up that word wonderful. Wonderful means a miracle, which is wonderful things. And you can refer back to the land of Egypt when God divided the Red Sea. That was a wonderful thing. That was a miracle. You can refer back to the New Testament when he would heal the sick, raise the dead, cure the blindness and all of that. That is his name and that is his character. That's why he can still do miracle even now. I need you to get it. I mean, even now, Jesus can still do miracle in your life. That is why you need to accept this gift that he is. That he is the gift that keeps on giving. That his name is wonderful. This is his character. This is who he is. This is what he is known for. He is known for doing miracles. He is known for doing wonderful things. He is known for doing unfathomable things. He is known for doing things that are beyond man's understanding. Whew. So, let's go forward. I don't want to stop there. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, as a counselor, is my advisor. And through the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, He said that He will give us another comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will counsel us and lead us into all wisdom. So Christ, through His Spirit in us, is counseling us. And we need to know we have a counselor. We have a counselor in Christ Jesus. This is the gift that keeps on giving. If I need wisdom, I can ask Him. When I need wisdom, because I will need 
I can ask him, I can go to him. When I'm in need, I can go to him. When I'm troubled, I can go to him. What a gift. Now, to move on, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Now, I checked out that word mighty, and it means a tyrant. He's, he's a mighty God. He's powerful. He's a powerful God. There's nothing that is beyond him. There's nothing that he cannot do. Now, all this is showing the display of Jesus as God. What is showing that Jesus is not just another man. He is the Son of God that is given. He was born as a child, but he is the Son of God that was given to us. That was why he walked as a God-man on earth. He is powerful. He is a tyrant God, but he is so strong, but so loving. Such that his strength is not such tyrant that is destructive, such power that is corruptive. So, such power that surprises, but it's such power that is so inviting, so inviting, so welcoming. So, such power that welcomes you in your weakness and he, and he says, give me your weakness and I'll replace your weakness with my strength. And again, he is not just known as the mighty God, he is known as the everlasting father. Like our everlasting Abba such that if you would think oh he is a tyrant powerful this powerful being that is, that is a tyrant I uh, can't get to him so that I won't be destroyed and it says he is the everlasting father this is relationship I, he says I have the power as a mighty God to do whatever you need but then I also have the heart as a father to love you I also have the heart as a father to invite you to welcome you to embrace you, to hug you, to call you my beloved, to call you my daughter, my son, you are welcome. My son, I love you. I'm not disappointed in you. I did a video about that, that you know, saying God calling you beloved. You can check it out in my channel, my YouTube channel, that God calls you beloved. Now, to go ahead, it says, the last thing it says is the Prince of Peace. The Prince that is the one that is in charge of the rule of peace. He's the ruler of peace. He's the one that gives peace. It's kind of like he's in charge of peace. He's in charge of dispensing peace. And peace is not just peace of mind, which is calm. Peace is not just quietness. His peace is welfare. He's the one in charge of making sure that you are okay. You are fine. When somebody asks you, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. Jesus makes you fine. Jesus makes you okay. He, he, that is his work. His work is to give you peace. A peace that passes understanding. A peace that you are going through difficulty. You are going through pain. You are going through some kind of hurt that would destroy you. And that peace is right there. And it just is amazing that he is in charge of your welfare. He's making sure that you are good. He's making sure that you won't commit suicide, even when you're having suicidal thoughts. He's making sure that even though you are depressed, he's there embracing you, owning you, making sure he gives you welfare. He's the Prince of Peace. I want you to see this gift as your gift. And to openly consent to receive this gift. You don't have to work to receive this gift. You just have to consent. All right, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for this gift. And if you can have a heart of gratitude to just tell God, thank you for the gift of Christ. Thank you for the gift of your son. I am so grateful that you sent him to die. I am so grateful because he actually was born to die for you. That's why the gift that was presented to him by the wise men was, represented, was representative of that. The gold shows him as God. Then Mary and frankincense, Mary was for preservation of his body when he's dead. And the frankincense talking about his life. So everything about Christ was ordained and purposed. And all he came was for you. He came for your sake and my sake. So receive this gift and don't just take this Christmas as a routine, a ritual or something you keep on doing. But allow the impact of the birth of Christ to have effect on your life so that whenever you look at christ again and you talk about the birth of christ you see that this is my gift 
If someone has not given me gifts this Christmas, I'm okay. I have a gift that passes all kind of gifts I would ever receive from any human. So just make sure that you embrace this gift with your whole hands. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye.